Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. Make sure to check in the description notes below the video where you will find links to all of my online shenanigans, including how to get my patterns to knit up for yourself, how to join the Watch Barbara Knit Facebook group, how to support me on Patreon, and where to get Watch Barbara Knit merchandise. You know, today I was a little strapped for ideas of what to make a video about. I'm not saying that I don't have all kinds of things that I couldn't make videos about. It's just, I sort of lost my motivation or my inspiration. I was just struggling with what I felt like inspired to talk about, like something that I was excited to talk about. And it made me remember a video I made about how to get your knitting mojo back. And I was like, I think I should go watch that video again. And I looked at it and it was in 2020. So that video is three years old now. And I thought, you know what? it might be a good time to revisit that question because I think this is something that every creative person goes through, how to re-inspire yourself when you're feeling uninspired, when your muse is gone on a little break, when your muse has decided that instead of being all shiny and inspiring, that what they'd rather do is pick up the Nintendo Switch and play video games. <laughs> I mean, and I often have that urge, but what do you do to try to woo your muse back to you? And so I rewatched that video and I will put a link in the description notes below to that original Mojo, Knitting Mojo video. But I was like, okay, those are all good ideas. How can I add to this? What other things can we touch on that might help someone get their inspiration, their desire, their motivation for knitting back. And as last time, I made a little list. Look at my tiny notebook. It's so cute. <laughs> I just covered up my mouth, so I don't know if that went to, but I have my tiny notebook and it's very cute. And it's funny because I found these tiny notebooks and I bought, they came in a pack and I just love the tiny notebooks. So you know what? That's one thing that can motivate. Have a tiny notebook. Have a tiny notebook and when you are motivated, write down things that you want to do, <laughs> okay? Um, and by that I mean is, you know, sometimes when all the cylinders are firing, you have so many things that you want to do, right? Uh, like there are things, there are times when everything is bubbling and you're running, you know, everything is going and your, your primary goal is you wish you had more than one pair of hands to work on stuff. When you're in that mode, have a little notebook, okay? And write down all the things you want to do. Now, if you are currently running dry on inspiration, this recommendation is not going to help you, but do a favor to your future self and keep an inspirational notebook, keep an idea notebook, keep a motivation notebook, write down things that you want to do when you're excited to do them, but you don't have the time. And then when you're in the doldrums, go back to your notebook and see what past you was really excited about because the odds are present you also going to be very excited about that. So you know what, and you know what's funny? That was a total, the reason why I made notes in my notebook was so that I wouldn't go off on tangents. And that was a total tangent. <laughs> that is not written down on my list, but tiny notebooks, love tiny notebooks, beautiful notebooks, things that you can write in to, to like get your ideas on paper so you can go back and look at them again. So the other thing you can use, use your notebook for, which is actually uh, what I do, have in my notebook is when you are unmotivated, sit down with your notebook and make a list of things that you want to learn how to do in knitting. 
Like if you are primarily a person who knits cables, write down lace or make a, think of it as a list of things you don't know how to do yet. If they're, it, you know, cables, lace, color work, intarsia, mosaic, brioche, uh, short rows, make a list of things that you're not really confident on or that you really want to learn, right? And once you have a list of things that you want to learn, look through that list and decide, okay, this, I really want to learn how to do these kind of fancy cables or how to do this style of uh, Estonian lace or whatever. And once you have that list, once you have a list of things that you want to learn, go to wherever you get patterns, be it Ravelry or Love Knits, Lo Love Crafts, Love Crafts. Um, a, or your favorite designer's website or whatever, or your local yarn store and look for patterns or a pattern that will help you learn that technique. Okay, so you're focused on technique, right? Or, I mean, it could be, I wanna learn how to learn, I've always wanted to learn how to knit socks. It could be a sock thing. <laughs> you know, it could be a particular item that you haven't knit before that you want to knit before. Find a pattern that what you're motivated for is to learn something new. And maybe that will help you get that inspiration back, get that motivation back, because it's something that you want to learn to do. And I'm going to say this, if you start it, right? and you feel like, okay, yeah, this is way easier than I thought it was. Um, I feel like I've got it and I don't really wanna finish this thing. Don't finish it. You don't have to finish it, <laughs> okay? If you're not feeling it, move on to something else. Um, you can repurpose the yarn or do what you want. Don't ever feel obligated to finish something just because you started it. If, you, if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it and you can be like, nope, I'm done with this. I learned what I needed to learn from this particular project, even if it is, I don't want to knit socks. <laughs> I mean, it was useful and your time was well spent learning this thing, but you don't have to finish it. And sometimes the thing that kills my motivation is not enjoying something that I'm working on, but feeling forced to finish it. Unless you're like knitting professionally, knitting is something that we do with our own time and our time is valuable. So don't, I really would discourage you from ever forcing yourself to finish something that you really don't want to be knitting. Our knitting time, our crocheting time, our weaving time, our time, it's a small amount of time we have to allot to this particular activity and you shouldn't waste it doing something that you don't want to be doing. Um, so you can always say no. Now, the other thing, and this is on my list, is after you've made this list of things you want to learn, you don't even have to do a project, okay? One of the things that when I am stuck is I swatch. Okay, and I know a lot of y'all are gonna be like, oh, swatch is a bad word. Swatching isn't just about getting gauge. I'm not talking about a gauge swatch. I'm talking about just picking up yarn, picking up needles and knitting something just to feel it or just to learn something. That is why I have all of these stitch dictionaries. Go to your local library or talk to your knitting friends, see if they have stitch dictionaries. Also, if you go to Google and just Google online knitting stitch dictionaries, you'll get a bunch of hits. You can find all kinds of stitches online or in stitch dictionaries and just look at it. Cast on 25 stitches and just start knitting a swatch, okay? to learn something or to just have fun or to learn something about a particular yarn. Say you have a yarn that you've had in your stash forever, but you didn't really know what to do with it. Just start knitting it. 
okay? It's not gonna break it if you knit with it. And once you've knit with it for a while, you might get inspired to, oh, I really like the feel of this and I really like the drape of this and I really think it's going to make X project. This would be a fantastic pair of fingerless mitts or this would be a fantastic hat. And then you've got that, um, you've got that, that inspiration, that impetus, you can pull that swatch out and go look for a hat pattern for that yarn because that yarn has told you what it wants to be. So I guess what I'm trying to say is purposeless knitting. Knitting that doesn't have, like you're not trying to make something except for joy in your knitting and, and to work with because it's just a beautiful yarn that you have or one that you don't understand or a technique that you wanted to learn. You don't have to have a project to put yarn on needles and knit something. And you might learn something and you might have a lot of fun. Okay, so make a list of things to learn. Consider simply knitting for the sake of knitting. Consider using a stitch dictionary or just swatching a yarn for the, the ability to swatch it and get to know it or maybe what you're looking for is purposeful knitting. We said purposeless knitting, just knitting for the sake of knitting. Maybe what you're lacking is motivation. You need there to be a reason to knit. And if you don't actually have a reason to knit, if you don't have something that you need to make for yourself, if you don't have a loved one in your life that you need to make something for, you are inspired to make something for, you might want to consider looking into charities that accept hand-knitted donations. Again, I'm not saying that you have to knit for charity because it is just fine for you to dedicate your knitting time and your crafting time to you and your projects. But if this is something that inspires you, it might help you get back on the knitting train. So go online and do some searching and see if there is a charity that um, really boys your spirit or that you feel uh, is something that you want to contribute to. I know people who knit newborn hats for uh, hospitals. I know people who knit the knitted knockers for individuals who have undergone a vasectomy, but don't they can't or do not want to wear artificial prosthetics that you can buy so you can knit the inserts for a bra to maintain the shape that the person wants to maintain there are blanket knitting charities there is um, a really cool charity i'll have to see if it still exists i think it's called red scarf or something where what they do is they knit scarves and send them to um, young adults who have aged out of foster care and been accepted to college who aren't receiving care packages in college. So that is a really cool thing. I know that there are plenty of animal based charities that can accept things like blankets and everything. Um, so and I think there are some animal rescue charities that like need knitted nests for like small animals. Look for a charity that speaks to you. If you're if you've lost motivation to knit for yourself, possibly it'll motivate you if you're knitting for a cause that is really uh, near and dear to you. So charity knitting might be something to look into if you've just completely lost all motivation to knit. And then what else? So finally, um, my fourth thing that I have written down here is do something different. Okay. You don't have to knit. Sometimes what your brain needs is a break. Sometimes you've run out of that uh, juice and you need to try something else. So look at other fiber arts. And the reason why I encourage you to look at other fiber arts is you still have yarn. <laughs> regardless of not you're knitting it, you might want to look at other things that you can do with said yarn. And I'm only really encouraging you to look at other fiber arts because whenever I start looking at another craft, it's like, okay, I want to do pottery and now I got to buy a wheel and now I got to buy this and I get a, and, and then it's way, way, way too much money. <laughs> 
<laughs> to get into something like that. So look into other fiber arts. Um, if you have never learned to crochet, maybe it's time to try to crochet. You could look into weaving. You don't have to buy a big old like rigid head of loom to weave. You can get a pin loom and those are small and they can be a lot of fun. You can get uh, a tapestry loom where it's a small format kind of thing. You could look into visible mending is really, really popular right now. And what that is, is taking a garment or something that has like holes and mending it in a very visible way so that you can see that it has been mended. Embroidery, y'all know I love me some embroidery. So taking a little break and doing a little something different might just let, you know, you have those knitting tracks in your brain and they're just really well worn. And maybe it's to the point where you just don't want to go down that road anymore. Your brain's like, nope, we're done here. Go back try something different. Look into a craft or a hobby or an activity that you've been thinking about doing but you didn't have time for. And while you're doing that, maybe the grass will go over those ruts and maybe it will start to look appealing because there is new territory to forge into once you've let it rest for a little bit. It's kind of like the idea of gardening, letting your land go fallow and giving it time to recollect nutrients and to recover because you've taken so much out of that land, you need to give it time to rest. So give the knitting part of your brain a little time to rest and go work on a different part of your brain. I've actually, I, I'm using all these analogies because I've actually planted a garden and it's nice to, you know, get outside. <laughs> I know this might sound really wacky. You could go for a walk. <laughs> you could go outside, you could go for a walk. Down here, we can go to the beach. I'm sure wherever you live, there are fun recreational activities that you can do. Just get out there. The nature can be inspiring or go to a movie. Just do, don't force yourself to knit. Give yourself permission to not knit. And that recovery time might refill that tank and put you on the road to be ready to hit it. And once you're ready to hit it, get out that list that you made of things that you want to learn and you can just go at it. So, um, <laughs> if, I hope if there's anyone out there that was looking for some ideas on how to reinvigorate their knitting motivation that some of these ideas might help you. Again, there's a previous video that went over mostly different things. I tried to bring new things to the table this time so you can go back and watch that older video as well. I had much longer hair uh, and I can't wait to see what you knit or possibly what other craft you might like start to like have on the side. You know, you need a side craft. It's like, you know, they say people have a side piece. You need a side craft just, you know, just to have there for when you're not feeling your main squeeze. It's okay, it's crafting. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.